Uh, Salisha, thank you so much for making time. Uh, first of all, obviously, no surprises here. The ANC indicated to its caucus who its nominee is. And basically, all the ANC members of parliament had to do is follow through on what the ANC said. Uh, good afternoon, Clement, and good afternoon to the, 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 the viewers. Yeah, I think it was almost a done deal. We knew that this was going to be the outcome. I'm just looking mm. at the numbers that are reflecting on your banner below, and you had 199 votes in favor of the current speaker, and you had about you had 82 votes that were in favor of the DA nominate, a, a nominated candidate. You're looking at about uh, 70, around 70 uh, plus votes, maybe 71, 72, my calculations could be of, of people who didn't come out to vote, non-parliamentarians that didn't vote. And I think that's quite indicative of the reaction to the current speaker. And more importantly, I think the controversies that shadowed her into this vote and into the fact that we kind of sitting in a, in a conundrum right now with regard to the fact that there was definitely protests around being uh, absent voting, voting by the EFF. And more importantly, I think the, 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 more, the, the, the critical point here for me is how is she going to manage this house going forward? Yeah, and how is, is she going to do that? She uh, indicated when she gave a speech that she recognizes the transition that she must personally make in order to fulfill uh, the obligations of parliament to ensure accountability and oversight of the executive branch. Where does she start with that transition? Well, I think the bigger challenge for her is where does she start with her own controversies that she comes into with, in terms of the parliament? Because right now she's sitting with an investigation that's being conducted into her conduct around whether or not she was uh, uh, culpable for corruption and so forth with her when she was Minister of Defense. And that's going to be the biggest ticket, I think, in terms of determining how impartial she remains. Will she excuse herself? Will she then follow the rules around these issues when it comes to uh, her being an implicated person in this whole process? And then, of course, you have that relationship between the executive and, and the legislature and the real issue around what has been, I would think, some important steps towards improving that engagement between oversight that the, that the legislature has been conducting and the accountability. Now, whether or not she, her appointment takes that back or her election takes that back, I think it's, a, it's going to be a watching brief. But more importantly, I think it's going to be a watching brief for how the ANC caucus also deals with these issues. There's a number of legislation that's before Parliament that needs to be dealt with, not, not least of them uh, are some of the controversial ones like amendment, 20, uh, amendment to Section 25 of the Constitution. That has to go to the National Assembly. Now, whether or not this is going to be something that's going to pose challenges to her and whether or not she remains impartial is going to be a watching brief. And I think she's going to have a, a, a bit of a challenging time with the EFF in the House. Yeah, I mean, they didn't participate today uh, in the vote. And, and we have seen in the past when, when the EFF doesn't necessarily recognize uh, you, they will be very clear in expressing that. And, and one wonders how, how frustrating that's going to be uh, for the Speaker of Parliament. She made a promise that members of Parliament have always made. Uh, 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 so she says, I pledge to protect the integrity and the mandate of Parliament without fear or favour. We've had this before, and yet still members of uh, the ANC in Parliament went and voted against, um, you know, holding the executive accountable. They've consistently defended their allegiance to the ANC, even when their oaths of office, when they were taking up these positions in Parliament, that allegiance was to us as South Africans. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be a bit facetious here and say that that's the warranty that comes with every kind of a person <laughs> who takes that position. They say that because it's the guarantee that they have to say. But of yeah. course, you know, it depends if you have an extended warranty and you really take it seriously. Uh, but, you know, jokes aside, I think that's a very important point because at the end of the day, this parliament has to also, it's got another two, two and a half years to go. And all things that are basically taking place in our political context has to basically reflect what's with this parliament going to do, what traction it's going to have. And, I'm, and I don't want to assume and make assumptions that she won't do her job. She's, still, she's just been elected. We've got to basically mm. see how it goes down the line. But I think that the challenge is to maintain that mandate she talks about and that, and, and that integrity of an institution that is so critical to the Constitution and comes on the back of what we've seen 
uh, being discussed and the evidence and the and the discussion and the and the issues that uh, were presented before the Zondo Commission. And I think for me personally, uh, it kind of sets the president back in terms of some of those issues that he raised in terms of keeping this this line, this blurry line between party and state. Uh, separate. I think now you've got this caucus in parliament, you've got this ANC uh, uh, caucus that has to also be uh, much more engaging, much more about this integrity and this mandate. I don't think this kind of standard warranty guarantee that you put out is just there because it's rhetoric. Mm, mm, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, some people have said that if uh, we wanted some level of, I don't know, objectivity or uh, the ANC to deal with issues of state capture um, and, and those that are implicated not to be involved, then you wouldn't really have uh, any members of the ANC in parliament uh, processing those, uh, those reports if, they, if, if it gets to parliament. Lastly, did you think it was weird because some opposition parties are questioning why she thanked former presidents, particularly the former president, Jacob Zuma, uh, for having deployed her in the executive. I mean, it wasn't just Jacob Zuma that she thanked. She thanked all the way, even Tabombek, even the current president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, because I think she was probably now the longest serving minister after Jeff Khadeve the last time when, when he was removed. Did you find that weird like other opposition parties did? Yeah, I mean, I think when you take a position like this, you want to remain as impartial as possible. Even if you feel that you need to be grateful, feel it yeah. internally, don't mention <laughs> it. You know? uh, and, and then just don't give your opposition parties more fodder to throw at you. And I think at the end of the day, while she wanted to be grateful, was Parliament the right place to make that yeah. statement? She could Ish. have made it in ANC. She could have made it in <laughs> other channels. I mean, she could have sat in the ANC caucus or she could have sat in Tuli House and said, thank you very much. I'm so grateful. But again, you know, I think sometimes our, our, the finesse of being a politician really needs to be evaluated at times. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you uh, always for your great insights, Sanusha uh, Naidu, helping us make sense of uh, what happened in Parliament.